Once upon a time, there was a frog and a fly. But this is not the beginning of a fairy tale. More the tale of how these two animals got their names. Their scientific names, to be exact. You may have noticed that animals have different names in different languages. For example, the word for dog is Hund in German, Chien in French, and Go in Mandarin. So to prevent any confusion when scientists around the world talk to one another, they use a system to give all species of animal a unique scientific name. When a new animal is discovered, it is given a new scientific name. Scientific names are made up of two parts, the genus and the species. This is why scientific naming is also called binomial nomenclature, the bi representing the fact that the name has two parts. The first part of a scientific name is the animal's genus. The first letter is always capitalised. Species that are most closely related belong to the same genus. For example, the first part of the scientific name of a dog is Canis. Other animals belonging to this genus include wolves and dingoes, meaning that dogs are closely related to these animals. The second part of a scientific name is the species. This is always written lowercase. The second part of the scientific name of a dog is lupus familiaris. A scientific name is always italicised. When it is handwritten, it is underlined. When a new species is discovered, the scientific name can be descriptive of the animal, which is the case for this frog and this fly. The fly was named Scaptia Beyoncé, after Beyoncé because of the golden hairs on its abdomen. The frog was named Hylocertus Prince Charlesi, after Prince Charles because of the charity work he funded to protect the rainforest where they are found. Lots of scientific names have been inspired by celebrities or famous characters. What's important in this tale is that with their unique scientific names, these animals can be referred to scientifically ever after.